Dumping syndrome is a condition in which food moves too quickly from the stomach to the small intestine. When this happens, it can lead to a range of uncomfortable symptoms like cramps, diarrhea, and dizziness. Dumping syndrome usually happens after certain types of stomach surgeries. Normally, when we eat, food travels from the mouth, down the esophagus, and into the stomach. In the stomach, powerful digestive juices and muscular contractions work to break down the food into a liquid or semi-liquid state. This partially digested food, known as chyme, is then gradually released from the stomach into the small intestine, where further digestion and absorption of nutrients takes place. But in individuals with dumping syndrome, this orderly process is disrupted, leading to a sudden dump of food into the small intestine. This sudden arrival of undigested food causes the body to react in ways that can be uncomfortable or even debilitating. Types of dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome can be classified into two phases, early dumping syndrome and late dumping syndrome. Number one, early dumping syndrome. Early dumping syndrome occurs within 10 to 30 minutes after eating. It is the most common form and is characterized by symptoms that happen due to the rapid influx of food into the small intestine. When a large amount of undigested food enters the small intestine rapidly, it draws water from surrounding tissues into the intestine. This influx of water leads to the symptoms of early dumping syndrome, such as abdominal cramping, bloating, and diarrhea. The body also responds to this sudden shift by releasing hormones that further exacerbate the symptoms. Number 2. Late Dumping Syndrome Late dumping syndrome happens 1-3 to three hours after a meal. This phase is primarily caused by a rapid rise in blood sugar levels following the quick absorption of carbohydrates. This sudden spike in blood sugar then triggers the pancreas to release a large amount of insulin in an attempt to bring the blood sugar back down to normal levels. However, this can lead to an overshoot, with blood sugar rapidly dropping below normal levels. This drop in blood sugar can cause symptoms such as fatigue, dizziness, sweating, and even fainting. Causes of Dumping Syndrome The causes of dumping syndrome are closely related to the surgical procedures that alter or affect the normal function of the stomach. For example, in gastric bypass surgery, the stomach is divided into a smaller pouch and connected directly to the small intestine, bypassing a large portion of the stomach and the first part of the small intestine. When this happens, the control over the release of food into the small intestine is lost. The result is that food, particularly foods high in sugar or fat, moves too quickly into the small intestine. It's important to note that dumping syndrome is not solely limited to those who have undergone gastric bypass surgery. Other types of gastric surgeries, such as gastrectomy, which involves the removal of part or all of the stomach, can also lead to dumping syndrome. In addition to the structural changes caused by surgery, certain dietary factors can also exacerbate the symptoms of dumping syndrome. Foods high in simple sugars, such as candy, soda, and fruit juices, can quickly overwhelm the small intestine and trigger the early dumping phase. On the other hand, high-fat foods can also contribute to the rapid emptying of the stomach and the subsequent symptoms. Symptoms of Dumping Syndrome the symptoms of dumping syndrome can be broadly categorized into early and late phases, each with distinct characteristics. In the early phase, symptoms typically occur within 10 to 30 minutes after eating. In this phase, you may experience a sudden onset of abdominal cramps and discomfort. These cramps can be accompanied by a feeling of fullness or heaviness in the stomach, as the rapid influx of food and liquid overwhelms the small intestine. Some people also report experiencing nausea and vomiting, as the body struggles to cope with the rapid emptying of the stomach contents. Other than that, you may have a feeling of urgency or a sudden need to have a bowel movement, as the rapid movement of food and liquid through the intestines can lead to loose watery stools or diarrhea. Alongside the gastrointestinal symptoms, individuals in the early dumping phase may also experience sweating, flushing, and a rapid heart rate. This is due to the body's physiological response to the sudden changes in blood volume and blood sugar levels. The rapid movement of food and liquid into the small intestine can cause a rapid rise in blood sugar, triggering the release of a large amount of insulin from the pancreas in an attempt to bring the blood sugar back down to normal levels.
In the late dumping phase, which typically occurs one to three hours after a meal, the symptoms can be even more debilitating. As the blood sugar levels drop below normal, you may experience a range of symptoms, including fatigue, dizziness, lightheadedness, and even fainting. The sudden drop in blood sugar can also cause tremors, sweating, and a rapid heart rate as the body tries to compensate for the low blood sugar levels. Before we continue, if you have been finding the video helpful so far, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. Diagnosis of Dumping Syndrome To diagnose dumping syndrome, your doctor will often start by asking about your surgical history, as the condition is most commonly seen in those who have had gastric surgery. They will also inquire about the timing and nature of the symptoms, particularly whether they occur shortly after eating and whether they are related to specific types of food. To confirm the diagnosis, your doctor may recommend certain tests. One common test is the oral glucose tolerance test, where you consume a sugary drink and your blood sugar levels are monitored over a few hours. This test can help identify the rapid spike and subsequent drop in blood sugar associated with the late phase of dumping syndrome. If blood sugar levels fall sharply after an initial rise, it indicates a problem with how your body is managing glucose, which is a hallmark of dumping syndrome. Another approach involves the gastric emptying test, which measures how quickly food moves from your stomach into your small intestine. During this test, you eat a meal containing a small amount of radioactive material. This allows the medical team to track the speed at which food leaves your stomach. In cases of dumping syndrome, food tends to empty more quickly than normal. The results of this test can provide a clear picture of whether rapid gastric emptying is contributing to your symptoms. Treatment for dumping syndrome one of the most effective ways to manage dumping syndrome is through dietary changes. Since the symptoms are closely tied to how food moves through the digestive system, adjusting what and how you eat can make a big difference. For instance, eating smaller, more frequent meals can help by reducing the amount of food that hits the stomach at once. This gives the stomach and intestines more time to handle what's coming in, reducing the chances of an early dumping reaction. High sugar foods and simple carbohydrates, like sugary snacks, white bread, and soda, are often culprits in triggering symptoms because they can cause rapid spikes in blood sugar. Instead, your doctor may encourage you to incorporate more high-fiber, protein-rich foods into their diet, as these can help to slow the digestive process and alleviate symptoms. Sometimes, dietary changes alone aren't enough, and that's where medications might come in. There are several types of medications that can help slow down the movement of food through the stomach, giving your body more time to digest properly. For example, doctors might prescribe octreotide, which is a medication that works by slowing down the emptying of the stomach. This can help prevent the rapid influx of food into the small intestine that triggers symptoms. Other medications, like a carbose, can help by slowing down the absorption of carbohydrates, which in turn helps to prevent the blood sugar spikes and crashes associated with late dumping syndrome. In more severe cases, where symptoms don't respond well to diet and medication, surgery might be considered as a last resort. This could involve procedures to reconstruct the stomach or to adjust the way the intestines connect to the stomach in an effort to slow down the digestive process. However, surgery is generally considered only when other treatments have failed and the symptoms are severely impacting quality of life. Now, we want to hear from you. Do you or someone you know have dumping syndrome? What was the cause of it? Share with us your experiences and opinions in the comments below. We love to hear them. Thanks for watching.